understanding Lord Jesus open our hearts open our, our minds unlock our thoughts give us a heart to understand Jesus we praise you we magnify you in your name Jesus we thank you let us put our hands together and give the Lord a hand praise all right, we're going to do our books of the Bible, and then we get started. All right, start with Genesis 1, 2, 3. I sound like y'all were studying a little bit there. All right, we're going to do the New, uh, New Testament. We start with the Gospels. One, two, three. All right, give yourselves a hand. I made it on through. I made it on through. How many books was that? How many books in the Bible? Six, six. Okay, very good. Okay. Yeah, I had me nervous. How many in the Old Testament? Everybody agree? How many? How many in the New? All right. Say it again. How many in the Old? 39. How many in the New? All right. Y'all come on now. Y'all all right? <laughs> Somebody shout hallelujah. All right. Now, we're going to continue with our study. What we were teaching on last Wednesday? We were last Wednesday? Oh, I wasn't. Huh? What was we, what were we teaching on last week? Anthropology. Very good. All right. Anthropology. What is anthropology? All right, study of man. So we're studying man. All right, again, I like to start at Genesis. And we do want to get this clear tonight. All right. Genesis chapter number two. And we do know the components of man. That's what I want to deal with tonight. I want to deal with the nature. We'll talk about the nature of mankind and the battles. So you have a natural aspect, a man which deals with the flesh. Then we have the spiritual aspect. Let's deal with the spirit. And then we are the components of both. So we fit right there in the middle. So we're the soul. All right. Genesis 2 and uh, 7. All right. Read on. And the Lord God formed man of the dust of the ground. All right. And breathed into his nostrils the breath of life. And man became a living soul. All right. First thing I want to mention. So it says that man became a living so, so we had an existence prior to getting to this realm that we are now. Uh, Jeremiah chapter 1. The Bible says that Jeremiah was known before he became in a body. So this tells me that we've had an existence prior to this realm, which is considered the earth realm. All right? Jeremiah 1 and 4 or 5, read on. 
Before I formed thee, before I formed thee in the belly, uh -huh. I knew thee. I knew thee. And before thou came forth out of the womb, I sanctified thee. So before he came out of the womb, there was a sanctification. He was ordained a prophet, but prior to him even getting in the belly, the Bible said that God already knew him. So how was he known if he wasn't uh, a person? What was he? So we've had some type of spiritual existence prior to we entered into this room. This is why God says that he knew it. In fact, this is how God can say he could choose us before the founding of the world. Uh, let me give you this. Go to 2 Timothy. All right. Uh, or get Ephesians. Ephesians. This Bible missing Ephesians and out of it, so y'all get it. Ephesians one and four. I got my raggedy Bible tonight. Well, this thing that been through some trial tribulation. All right, read one and four. According, According as he have chosen us. As he have chosen us in him. In him. Before the foundation of the world. So before there was a founding, or before there was a foundation of the world, we existed, but we existed in God. And so we know that God is a spirit. So we exist. And so this is how, it's just like uh, all of my children existed in me before they existed in their mother. So they existed in me, but they didn't exist as an actual person until I came in contact with their mother. So the seed got in their mother, and then they became a child, just like us. So now we remember, just as God spoke or when he created mankind uh, in the beginning, he used earth as a womb. So it's almost as if his spirit was a sperm and went into the earth and created a man. Everybody understand that? All right, but go, go back down there. This is why, is why it talks about water because it's just like a woman when right before a woman has a child, what happens first? Water has to break, right? So you'll see that happens with the earth. Go back down to the Genesis chapter 2 and 6. All right, read. But there went up a mist from the earth. Went up a mist from the earth. And watered the whole face of the ground. Yes. And the Lord God formed man of the dust of the ground. All right, so God used earth as a woman. And this is the Bible. You, you see in the book of Isaiah, you'll see that the, the earth was, is considered a woman. And not only is she considered a woman, but the Bible says that she has a womb. All right, so now we have the earth. And people call it Mother Earth, all different things like that. It's looked at as a woman, but God uses his seed to get inside of the earth. So now we existed in God as spirit before we got into the earth. Everybody understand that? Just like, okay, prime example, all right? Every, every, uh, anybody familiar with fruits? Okay, what's, it, what's inside of an apple? Seed. All right, where that seed came from? Uh, it come from another apple? Or did it come from another seed? The seed is where? In itself, so everything that was produced. So now, in order for man to become something, or in order for a seed to come out of God, you know, the Bible talks about He breathed breath, that spirit into that. Go, go, go to, uh, get, go back to, uh, get Genesis one, and this deals with creation, one and uh, uh, one and eleven. All right. And God said, God said, let the earth bring forth grass, uh -huh. the herb yielding seed, uh -huh. and the fruit tree yielding fruit after his kind, uh -huh. whose seed is in itself. Seed is in itself. So the Bible says in the book of Ephesians chapter 1 and 4 that we existed in him. So we existed in God before the world began. Thus, this is how when Adam was created, go back down to uh, Genesis chapter 5, when you start talking about the... Uh, generations, all of the generations was inside of Adam. Everything was in him. His Seth was in him, Abel was in him, Cain was in him. Uh, all of these were inside of him. In fact, uh, all of the generations, when you look at all of this person begat Enos and uh, Cain, all, all of these different ones, uh, go to Genesis chapter 5 and start at 1. Huh? This is the book of the generations of Adam. What's the root word of generation? Gene. So where does gene come from? Y'all took that. Anatomy class. 
All right, so gene come from within. <laughs> All right, so the gene come within. All right, read, uh-huh. So this is generation. This is the gene of, of Adam. All right, read, uh-huh. In the day that God created man, in the likeness of God made he him. Uh -huh. Male and female created he them and blessed them and called their name Adam in the day when they were created. And Adam lived 130 years and begot a son in his own likeness after his image and called his name Seth. All right, so you got Seth. Hey. Oh, welcome in, Seth. We just was talking about you. <laughs> so we have, we have Seth. All right, read, uh-huh. And the days of Adam after he had gotten, begotten Seth were 800 years, uh -huh. and he begat sons and daughters. And he begat sons and daughters. So all of these sons and daughters, all of these existed inside of Adam. So you remember, and this is how we know that there had to be an existence in God, in spirit, because he creates man in his image and his likeness. So what man had the ability to do, God has had to have the ability to already do. Everybody understand that? All right. Now, let's go back. If you have a question, raise your hand. I don't want nobody to be confused. I want y'all to, to get this. All right. So this is why we have this warfare. So now we have this battle between the flesh, which deals with the natural side of us, where we came from the earth, all right? And then we have the spirit man, the spirit that comes from God, all right? Uh, get the book of Galatians chapter 5 and 17, I believe it is. All right? And, and, and I do want to make this distinguish uh, between, you know, this was, now Adam was the first man made in the image and likeness of God. Adam was not the first man on the earth. And we have to get that. We have to understand that. Because some folk don't, everybody believe that Adam was the first initial man that was on the entire planet earth, but he wasn't. All right? And I want to show you that. Hang on, son. All right, go to Genesis. Now, who did all we start? Who, who did we start with? All right, everybody got this part. You erase it. Want y'all got some good note takers? Zay, I see you back there with your Bible. You highlighted. I'm proud of you, man. I see you. All right. We got. Everybody got this. All right. If you don't, we got it on Facebook Live and YouTube. All right, so who do we start with? Adam. Who came out of Adam? Eve. Who else came out of Adam? Cain and Abel. All right, everybody know the story? That spells the name right. That looks like the wrong Abel. That looks like he's Abel. Let me change that. <laughs> All right. All right, Cain. So we got Cain, Abel, Eve. And Adam, right? Now, what happens to uh, Cain? I gotta read your Bible. What happened? <laughs> okay, so Cain, he kills Abel, right? Is that right? Okay. And that happens in chapter four, right? That's the book, all right? Chapter number four. All right, so how many people is left? Three? All right. All right, give me Genesis chapter four. Genesis 4 and 14. Behold, thou hast driven me out this day from the face of the earth, and from thy face shall I be hid, and I shall be a fugitive and a vagabond in the earth. And it shall come to pass that everyone that findeth me. Hold on. That who? Everyone. Everyone that do what? Findeth me. Findeth me. Shall slay me. So who is this everyone? He's not talking about his mom. He's not talking about his dad. And he can't be talking about his brother because his brother is deceased. So now you got, he's saying that everyone. Now keep reading. Uh -huh. And the Lord said unto him, Therefore, whosoever slayeth Cain, vengeance shall be taken on him sevenfold. Uh -huh. And the Lord set a mark upon Cain. The Lord set a, monk, a mark upon Cain. Lest any finding him should kill him. Lest any finding him should kill him. So who was this any? There had to have been somebody 
else living or existing. It couldn't have just been, you know, talking about his mom and dad. It had to have been talking about somebody else. Now you got to keep reading because then we find out that there's a whole established city with people and buildings. Right, says, keep reading, huh? And Cain went out from the presence of the Lord uh -huh. and dwelt in the land of Nod. Dwelt in the land of Nod. On the east of Eden. Uh huh. And Cain knew his wife. And Cain knew his wife. And she conceived. Now Cain gets married. She has a baby. Uh huh, read. And bare Enoch. Yes. And he built a city and called the name of the city after the name of his son. So now Enoch. the land of Nod had folk in them. They just was not people in the image or likeness as God, of God as Adam was. This is why there had to be some type of distinction. That's why he says, go back to Genesis chapter 1. All right. And 27, huh? Well, so, uh, I'm sorry. And 20. Wait, you know what? Let me give you this. Because it's going to show you that there was something there before. Uh, he talks about replenishing. Start at 25. Uh -huh. I'm sorry, 27. I said it right. All right, read. Uh -huh. So God created man in his own image. God created man in his image. In the image of God created he him. Uh -huh. Male and female created he them. Uh -huh. And God blessed them and God said unto them, uh -huh. be fruitful and multiply. Be fruitful and multiply. And replenish and the earth. And replenish what? The earth. So there has to have been something there, but then there had to have been uh, a remnant of something because now Cain goes to a, a city called Nod or a land called Nod. He gets married. They have cities, building time, all this stuff that's going on in these different cities. So we'll see that Cain and Abel or, or, or uh, Adam was the first man in the image and likeness of God. So these other beings or man or whatever they was that was there, they were existing before Adam. And this is why God took Adam from the earth and placed him in the garden because there was a separation. There was a distinction, just like how we're in the world, but now we're considered the church. So he takes us out of the world and puts us in the church, just like God took Adam off the ground and placed him to the garden. Everybody understand that? And this is, this is, this is the understanding of, 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 of man, the nature of man. All right, so now, all right, where I have you at? Genesis. Genesis, all right, go down to... Uh, go to chapter number three. So now, up until chapter number three, where Adam falls into sin, mankind was just subject to God's spirit. So we have the spiritual nature of God. And so after Adam sinned, that's when it birthed out this rebellion. This is why everybody in here, you have a, a, another side of you. Y'all all right? Why y'all looking around? I'm talking about y'all, yeah. There's another side of you. You have a side that want to rebel. You have a side that want to behave. So you got a side that want to behave, but then you got another side of you that want to rebel. So this is where we get, we get that dual nature, and I'm going to talk about that tonight. That dual nature comes from what happened with Adam in the garden. So everything that was produced out of him has that same nature, all right? Now, go to, uh, in fact, go read three and one, uh-huh. Now, the serpent was more subtle than any beast of the field which the Lord God had made. And he said unto the woman, Yea, have God said, Ye should not eat of every tree of the garden. And the woman said unto the serpent, We may eat of the fruit of the trees of the garden, but of the fruit of the tree which is in the midst of the garden, God hath said, Ye shall not eat of it, neither shall ye touch it, lest ye die. And the serpent said unto the woman, Ye shall not surely die. For God doth know that in the day ye eat thereof, then your eyes shall be opened, and ye shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. And when the woman saw that the tree was good for food, and that it was pleasant to the eyes, and a tree to, desire, to be desired to make one wise, she took of the fruit thereof, and did eat, and gave also unto her husband with her, and he did eat. And the eyes of them both were opened, and they knew that they were naked. So now, 
their eyes are now opened, and now they're birthed into something different. They're open to a different realm because now they're in rebellion against God. So now the rebellious nature that comes within mankind, it happens and it starts from here. This is where I gene that. This is why the book, this book is called Genesis. It talks about the genes, the beginning of things. This is the beginning of rebellion for man. Now, it's not the first person that did sin, but this is the first in action that dealt with mankind. Because Satan, of course, he sinned in heaven, but he ain't had nothing to do with because we didn't come out of him. He don't have a reproduction system. Everybody understand that? All right. Now, we keep on reading up. And they sewed fig, fig leaves together and made themselves aprons. And they heard the voice of the Lord God walking in the garden in the cool of the day. Uh -huh. And Adam and his, and his wife hid themselves from the presence of the Lord God amongst the trees of the garden. And the Lord God called unto Adam and said unto him, where art thou? And he said, I heard thy voice in the garden, and I was afraid because I was naked, and I hid myself. And he said, Who told thee that thou were, was naked? Hast thou eaten of the tree whereof I commanded thee that thou shouldest not eat? And the man said, The woman whom thou gavest to be, be with me, she gave me of the tree, and I did eat. And the Lord God said unto the woman, What is this that thou hast done? And the woman said, The serpent beguiled me, and I did eat. And the Lord God said unto the serpent, Because thou hast done this, thou art cursed above all cattle. All right, so now this is man getting into a sinful nature. Now let's get uh, Galatians chapter 5 and 17. So this is why mankind struggles with or has... these two natures, almost like a war zone. All right, read 5 and 17. For the flesh lusts is against the spirit. All right, so now you have the flesh versus the spirit. So now it says that it, it lusts against. Anybody understand what that means? Yes. Very good. So the desire of the flesh is contrary or it fights the spirit. Mm -hmm. So now we have a, we have the flesh desires. So we're going to talk about lust. See, every lust isn't, I know when we talk about when people say lust, they just think automatically sexual. Lust doesn't mean sexual. It's just a desire. Because then we see the Bible goes on, run, read, uh -huh. And the spirit against the flesh. So the spirit has a lust against the flesh as well. So it's the desires that the spirit has is against what the flesh wants. So now these are the two natures that mankind deal with. And it comes from, you know, see, when it's almost like this, put in the mind of like a, a mother and a father. So you have the earth and you have God. So you have the, the flesh side and you have God. So you got natural and you have spirit. And you got the child, which is us, is the soul. We stuck in the middle of a divorce. So now we got this battle, you know, <laughs> you got the separation of the, <laughs> the spirit and of uh, the natural, and then you got the soul right there in the middle. So now we, we try to do what mama wants us to do. And there was a, okay, what I got to do, what daddy want to do. So now you got a, a house that's split in half. And so this is how, this is how our uh, uh, soul is functioning now because it's a battle going on. There's a fight. Read on up. Huh? And, and, the and these are... Contrary, uh -huh. the one to the other. Yes. So that ye cannot do the things that ye would. So now he's saying these are contrary to the other. So these are the fights. And it starts with, and it, and it comes from uh, uh, the gene of it. All right. Now, I want you to get, uh, go to, uh, and, and you'll see this all throughout the Bible. Uh, with When it comes down to twins, the Bible will give uh, twin analogies. And I'm going to give you this. Go to the book of um, uh, go to Genesis. Go back to Genesis. Go to Genesis chapter 25. Or I'll go over it real quick. So you got Cain. You got Abel. What's the other twins in the Bible? Anybody know them? Okay, Jacob. You got Esau. Now, when you see, when you start looking in the Bible, you'll see that a lot of times Jacob 
His name is interchanged, uh, uh, interchanged to what? What is his name? We call it what? Israel. So you have Jacob sometimes, and then you have Israel sometimes. But most, I spell that wrong. Yeah. Man, I'm having a hard time with this. I can spell for real, y'all. I'm just, it's, it's tough up here writing on the board. All right. So uh, you, you'll see that God utilizes these. So Cain would be representing the flesh, Abel, spirit. Same thing with Jacob. Same thing with Esau. So we'll start seeing these twins throughout the Bible. You see the nature of the things that they do. You know, one, you know, uh, doing things with the sheep, which will show the spirit side. And the other one working in the field, which showed the, the flesh side. Everybody understand that? So this is what the, this is the battle of mankind. This is studying man, studying man. All right. Now, uh, go to, um, uh, let me give you this. Go to the book of 2 Corinthians chapter 4. And see, when it comes down to good and evil, all we knew was good until Adam ate of that fruit. Adam ate of the fruit, so now we deal with good and evil. Remember, Jesus said that, uh, says that now in the book of Genesis, and we're going to go back. I'm sorry. Uh, get to a 17. Or start at 16. Uh -huh. And the Lord God commanded the man, saying, Of every tree of the garden thou mayest freely eat. Uh -huh. But of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil thou shalt not eat of it. For in the day that thou eatest thereof thou shalt surely die. So now, <laughs> once you eat of this tree, now you have knowledge of what? Good and what? Evil. So now evil is brought in the, in the picture based upon the rebellion. So now, if, if Adam did not sin, it didn't matter if Eve sinned or not because Eve didn't carry the seed. When Adam, when the Bible said, when Adam, when he ate, that's when everybody's eyes was open or when their eyes started open. Eve ate, nobody's eyes was open. Adam ate, eyes open. So now the nature of sin came from the man and he put it on everybody else. It wasn't, it wasn't Eve that put sin on everybody. It was Adam. <laughs> Let me show you the Bible now. <laughs> because see, it wasn't Eve's fault because Eve didn't have nothing in her. She didn't have, she didn't have no babies in her. She didn't, have no, she didn't have seed in her. See, he corrupted. See, when Adam sinned, he put corruption on every seed that was in him. Eve didn't have any seed in her until she got pregnant by Adam. And then that, it was temporary. That seed was only in there for nine months. After that, that was it. Oh, I wish I had a few of y'all in there today. So Adam eats, and sin comes into the picture. It doesn't say by one woman's sin. It says by one man. Give me Romans 5. Romans 5, all right, and 12. Read, uh-huh. Wherefore, uh-huh. As by one man sin. As by one who? Man. So it wasn't Eve. Eve didn't put the sin on mankind. It wasn't, it wasn't Eve's fault. Adam, he should have had enough backbone not to eat the fruit. <laughs> but once Adam ate, it messed up mankind. So now we have this dual nature in us, not because of Eve. It was Adam. Because Adam had the seed in him. All right? Read, uh-huh. 5 and 12. Oh. Wherefore? As by one man sent entered into the world, uh -huh. and death by sin. So <laughs> Eve didn't even kill nobody. Adam did. Adam was the one that put death on all of us. It was Adam. That's why Jesus had to come in the flesh. Had to have another man that was seed. That had seated him to redeem us. Mm -hmm. My God. All right, read, uh-huh. And so death passed upon all men. And so death passed upon who? All Everybody men. had death on them because of Adam. Because of his one mistake, his one flaw messed up everybody. Y'all follow me? All right, read, uh-huh. For they all have sinned. All have sinned. For until the law. Wait, so how did everybody sin? How did everybody sin? Huh? 
out of everybody's sin. When Adam sinned, everybody said, why? Because we was in them. <laughs> we was in them. Just like the Bible talks about Levite, he talked about paying tithe, and he wasn't even born. All right, let me give you some Bible. And yeah, this one, I ain't got many pages here. All right. I found it. All right. Hebrews 7. 7. And start at 5. And verily. And verily, they that are of the sons of Levi, who receive the office of the priesthood, have a commandment to take tithes of the people according to the law. That is, of their brethren, though they come out of the lo loins of Abraham. Oh, all right. uh -huh. But he whose des descent is not counted from them received tithes of Abraham and blessed him that had the promises. Received tithes of Abraham. Uh -huh. And blessed him that had the promises. Uh -huh. And without all contradiction, the less is blessed of the better. And here men that die receive tithes. But there he receiveth them, of whom it is witness that he liveth. Uh -huh. And as I may say so, as I may so say, Levi also who receiveth tithes, paid tithes to Abraham. For he was yet in the loins of his father when Melchizedek met him. Ah, so he paid tithes, but he wasn't even born. How he paid tithes and he wasn't born? He did it because he was inside his father. So everybody, this is how sin is on everybody, or this is how sin got on everybody once Adam ate, all right? And I'm going to show you that one more thing. Genesis, go back to Genesis chapter 3, and I'm going to move forward here. All right. All right, read 6 again, 2 and 6. But there went up a mist from no, the I'm earth. I'm sorry, three and six. And when the woman saw that the tree was good for food, and that it was pleasant to the eyes, and a tree to be desired to make one wise, she took of the fruit thereof and did eat. All right. Eve ate. Uh huh. And gave also unto her husband with her, and he did eat. He ate. And the eyes of them both were open. Once he ate, that's when things change. Soon as Adam ate. Now you got to realize now. The writing is with commas and periods and verses for us. The mm -hmm. Bible wasn't always like that. The Bible was written just to be, you know, people just, they just wrote the letters or wrote down what was going on. But it, the verses, the chapters, all that stuff like that was compiled later. So when you read this, you'll see that Eve ate, nothing happened. But when Adam ate, that's when things changed. And then it, it's confirmed in Romans chapter number six. All right. Give me first Corinthians chapter 15. All right. Now this this goes on to deal with uh, the differences of man and spirit, and how we need to get talks about the different bodies. All right. And it calls our flesh corrupt. All right. 15 and 42. So also is the resurrection of the dead. It is sown in corruption. It is raised in incorruption. It is sown in dishonor. So it's sown in what? Corruption. In corruption. So that means that every woman that got pregnant with a seed, that seed was what? Corrupt. <laughs> oh <my God. laughs> every child that came out the womb got corruption on them. They got pretty blue eyes. They have nice curly hair. <laughs> And all that stuff. 
pretty gums when it come out, all that stuff. Still corrupt. Yes. Yeah, it's very equivalent. Very equivalent. All right. Read, uh huh. Now, then he talks about, so now, sown in corruption, and it talks about raising in corruption. So now this raising deals with us being resurrected. So, you know, and this is, this is where um, uh, baptism comes into play to remove that old Adam of corruption off of you. All right, read, uh huh. It is sown in dishonor. Sown in dishonor. It is raised in glory. So that, that sown is you know, not just corrupted, but you're a dishonorable vessel. Read, uh huh. It is sown in weakness. And so this is what, and, and sown in weakness. So even Jesus said, the spirit is willing, but what? Flesh and greed. Ah. So now it's sown in weakness. Now this is not, this is not dealing with a person. This is dealing with a nature. Right. So you got to understand the difference. You say, oh, I, I, thought I, I thought I was a good vessel. Raised, I thought God chose me. No, it's talking about your nature. Not, a, not the person. Not a bad person. You guys got a bad nature. You're not a good person. You got a good nature. So now, and this is where, you know, where the spirit and the flesh come into play. All right, read. Uh -huh. It says, sown in weakness. It is raised in power. So now, now we know this raised in power can't be talking about your flesh. Can't be talking about the flesh. It got to be talked about the incorruptible body. That spirit man got to be talking about that. Can't be talking about the flesh because the flesh is sown in weakness. It's weak. Read, uh-huh. It is sown a natural body. Sown a what? A natural so now body. Now we get to understanding. It's talking about what? What is he talking about now? A natural body and what? It is raised a, a spiritual, spiritual body. So now all of these sewn down and raised up, all this is talking about is a natural body and a spiritual body. So the natural you versus the spiritual you. Everybody understand? Because when we look at, everybody got this? All right. When we look at us, we're really considered uh Call it body, soul, and what else? Spirit. Right? Body, soul, spirit. So these are components, and this is what we all, you know, this is this is why we have, you know, this, this outer man, the shell, talks about, you always see the Bible talk about the outward man and the inward man, dealing with two different components, the inward man, the outward man, flesh, spirit, all this fight, this battle's going on, all right? It is sown a natural body, uh-huh. It is raised a spiritual body. Uh-huh. There is a natural body. There is a natural body. And there is a spiritual and body. And there is a spiritual body. All right, and we're going to keep going through this, but I, I'm going to give you this real quick. I think it's in, uh, uh, where you at? First Thessalonians 5 and All right. And the very God of peace sanctify you wholly. And I pray, God, your whole spirit, spirit and soul, soul and body. And body. So it got the spirit, soul, body. Uh -huh. Be preserved blameless unto the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. So it talks about the spirit, the soul, and the body. These are all components of you. Everybody understand that? All right. Now go back down to that first Corinthians, uh, first Corinthians 15. All right. All right, and it's powerful how this thing is set up because then the Bible introduces us to two atoms. And he's dealing both ways. He's dealing with a natural aspect and a spiritual aspect. The natural man, the spirit man. And so just like you, you're a natural man and you have a spiritual component. And this is why there is a, there's always this battle between the natural you 
and the spiritual you. Now, most case scenario, who are you going to side with? The natural. Because the spirit side of you don't want to do the right stuff. Spirit, that, that, that spirit, and that natural side of you, you know, it want to cuss people out. It want to cut up. It want to fight. That's a natural side. And that's what you, and you, you, you ever had that battle where, <laughs> you ever had that battle where somebody does something and it's one side of you like, man, boy, oh my goodness. Boy, uh, man. You say, man, I, man, they better be glad I'm saved. Y'all ever had that conversation before? <laughs> See, I just, I just got baptized. They better stop playing with me. <laughs> I, I, just, I just got out this, I just got out this tub, man. I ain't, I ain't received the Holy Ghost just yet. I just, I just got out this water, man. Y'all better, better find somebody else to play with. Y'all been there before. Because they, 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 they didn't have this song talking about try Jesus, don't try me. Y'all know what I'm Y'all done heard that song before. <laughs> they have all, all these different things because... There is a there's a there's a natural side of you that want to do stuff that the natural mind thinks, and so this is something that we're born with this natural side. This is this is the side that that with that basically almost owns us, if you will. And this is why the Bible talks about to mortify the deeds. So now we got to go visit the mortician. We got to figure out how to kill the deeds of the natural us. Y'all with me? All right, read, uh-huh. And so it is written. All right, read. And so it is written, the first man, Adam, was made a living soul. The last Adam was made a quickening spirit. So now it's still talking about these two components. So now this is why it's important. And then when we study this, and if you really study this, you will learn that you have to get out of the the first man, Adam, and then get into that last Adam. That's, what, that's the stage that we're trying to get to. And in all actuality, just like when we talk about, uh, 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 you know, us being born, we have the nature of Adam, you know, in us. And so we have Adam in us, and we're trying to get to this last Adam stage. So we're trying to get to our, our godly side. We're trying to grow up into that. This, this Bible talks about how we got to, Grow into it. Go, go to the book of uh, Ephesians, I think it is. All right. Yes, I think that's it. Get, get four, and does it start at 14? 13. Four and 13, is that it? Which one? 15? Yeah, and we we'll go 13 to, 13 to 15. Till we all come in the unity of the faith yes. and of the knowledge of the Son of God uh -huh. unto a perfect man, unto the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ. So now we gotta, we got to measure up to the fullness. Watch this. Read. Uh -huh. That we henceforth be no more children tossed to and fro uh -huh. and carried about with every wind of doctrine yes. by the slate of men and cunning craftiness whereby they lie and wait to deceive. Uh -huh. But speaking the truth and love may grow up in, in, grow up into him in all things. So now we have to learn how to grow up into him. Now, this is how when children grow up, see, you know, my son, when he was first born, he looked exactly like his mama. But as he's growing, you can start to see Eli now. You can't see, you can't see his mama, but you can see Eli now. So now he's growing, he's growing. So this is what we're supposed to do. We was born like this, but as we grow, we're supposed to grow looking like God. So this is how this, this is how you you know you can start off looking a certain type when and, and you know baby when they had them little you know, babies come out looking like nothing sometimes most cases they be like man they like man I don't know who child that belong to yet you get a little color on it all the babies come out a certain color and then and then after a while they start changing you, you, you know what I'm saying so they they haven't really grown into anything yet but as they start to grow you say man he's he's starting to look like he's starting to look like Leron now that 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 look like Leron's son he's starting to look like him now. And growing up into that. Everybody understand that? So that's how, and the Bible talks about how we bear the image. So now we got to learn how to grow into the image. And that's what, that's what we're doing now. We're learning how to grow into the image. We're learning how to grow into the likeness. So we have to get out of the image and likeness of Adam and grow into the image and likeness of God. 
because Adam lost that. So now it's our job to get it back. So now as we grow in God, see, this is a journey. Nobody in here perfect. You're not perfect yet. You, haven't, you ain't make it. I know you're speaking in tongues, running around the church, all that stuff like that, but you ain't make it just yet. You're still fighting. Still fighting. You're going to still have a fight. You're going to battle. <laughs> you're going to battle until you get out of here. And this, is why, and this is why Jesus is so merciful. Watch what he says in the book of Jude. And sometimes you think you done conquered it. And then you say, man, I, I thought I got over this, man. You better not try me no more, man. I thought I got over I thought I got I over rolling my eyes and stuff. And then that, first, that, that time coming, and you back there, you say, man, how did I get back to that place? All right, read, uh-huh. Jude 1 and 24. Now I went to him that is what? Able. Able to do what? To keep you from falling. Keep you from falling and do what? To present ye faultless. Yes. Before the presence of his glory. So he says that he's able to keep you from falling and then not only keep you from falling, but he's able to do what? Present, present you, faultless. you faultless. How in the world is that possible if I could be found at fault on many occasions? My gosh. How is that possible? If I'm always ready, I'm, you know, they call you the rider. You're always ready. You're always on go, ready to do something to somebody. Always ready. But he says that I'll present you faultless. What kind of God is that? Because he know what kind of natures we're dealing with. He know what we got. He know yeah. that, he know that, you know, see, see, when David, when he was messing up, he's come to God like, look, God, you, you know I was born in sin. Yes, sir. And not only was I born a sin, but I was I was shaped the way I was shaped. I was shaped. It. Look, now wait. So he he said now first thing I know that I was born into sin, but then he talk about iniquity. Iniquity deal with something that's hidden. He said, but now I was born into sin, and I'm shaped. My, the way I was shaped, the way I was formed, it was in iniquity. And even when my mama, when I was, when my mom and dad was together, it was sin. That's what David said. He said, it ain't my fault I'm falling like this. My parents are messed up. <laughs> go to Rome, I'll go to Psalm. David's a good, he's a, David, man, he, he knew how to talk, man. He had it, man, he. I guess that's why his son had all of women. <laughs> David, uh, Solomon had 300 wives and 700 concubines. That's 1,000 women. I did the math, and if that was the case, he was, if he talked to one girl one day, as he'll see the same girl every three years. That's how many women have. He, he would see, if he, he had one, he'll see her, all right, I'll see you in three years, and then go to the, I'll see you in three years. Every one person will rotate every three years. That's how many women he had. I declare one woman is enough problems. I don't know if we need a thousand. <laughs> a, I don't know. A thousand, a thousand, man, that, that was a, that's rough, man. Huh? Yeah. He probably ain't had no hair. <laughs> All right. 51 chapter of uh, Psalm. Watch how David is talking to God. All right. Have mercy upon me, O God. Have mercy on me, God. According to thy loving kindness, according unto the, the multitude of thy tender mercies. Ah, listen to him. Not just his mercies. <laughs> but he called his mercies what? Tender. Tender mercy. <laughs> he, said, he said, according to your what? The multitude. The multitude of, of he didn't say you just got you just got mercies. He said the multitude. Yes, sir. Which means a lot. <laughs> and then not just mercy, he said it's real tender. He knew how to talk to God. Read, uh huh. Blot out my transgression. He said, blot it out. God, I, I messed up. Blot it out. Wash yeah. me thoroughly 
from my iniquity. Wash me thoroughly from my iniquity. And cleanse me from my sin. And clean me from my sins. For I acknowledge my transgressions. Uh -huh. And my sin is ever before me. Listen to him. He said, my sin is ever before me. But he understood God. Because just because your sin is before you doesn't mean it's in front of God. See, we, we have it in front of us, and we beat ourselves up. It's right there in front of you. It's ever, he said, it's always going to be on my mind that I did this. But you know how God was. Read, uh-huh. Against thee, thee only, have I sinned uh -huh. and done this evil in thy sight, that thou mightest be justified when thou speakest and be clear when thou judgest. He said, now, he said, now, I want you to make sure that, you know, when you, when you speak is... When you're speaking, it's justified. And when you judge me, just let it be clear. This is how you're talking to God. You're talking to God, Lord, just let it be clear. Have a clear heart when you're judging me. Open mind. Just, you know, don't, 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 don't beat me up too bad. I, I want you, you know, just, just think about me. And, 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 and you're just God. That's why he says that thou, you know, he says, he says that thou mightest be justified when you speak. You're just God. Yes. You tell him, he said, you're just God. So whatever decision you make, I know it's going to be just. He said, but be clear when you judge me. Just remember. Remember them days I danced. Remember when I used to get the Ark of the Covenant. Now, remember all the stuff that I did. <laughs> Read, uh-huh. Behold, I was shaping in iniquity. And in sin did my mother conceive me. Sorry, so now he said, I want you to hold on to this. <laughs> God, why are you judging? Now listen to him. He said, I want you to be clear in your judgment. And then he said, why are you judging? I want you to hold on to this. Hold that I was shaped in iniquity, and I want you to hold that my mom was in sin when I was born. While my mom and dad was getting together, it was sin. I want you to hold on to that. Read on. Behold, thou desirest truth. In the inward part. So you, 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 I know you want to, you know, get truth in the inward. All right, read. Uh -huh. And in the hidden part, thou shalt make me to know wisdom. Uh-huh. You're going to give me an understanding of what I've done? Uh-huh. Purge me with hyssop. But then I want you to purge me. Uh-huh. And I shall be clean. I'm going to be clean. Wash me. Wash me. And I shall be whiter than snow. Uh-huh. Make me to hear joy and gladness that the bones which thou hast broken may rejoice. Uh -huh. Hide thy face from my sins and blot out all my iniquities. Creating me a clean heart. So oh now, God. God, I want you to start doing surgery on me. I want you to open me up. I want you to put a clean heart in me because my heart is dirty. My heart is wicked. And the bad thing is, the first time heart is mentioned in the entire Bible, it's wicked. It's called the law of first mention. The first time you, and I like to study like this. I studied the law of first mention. That means the first time you see that word in the Bible. First time heart was mentioned in the Bible, it came along with wickedness. Go to Genesis 5, uh, 6, I think it is. All right. Six and five, all right. And God saw that the wickedness of man was great in the earth. Wickedness. Uh -huh. And that every imagination of the thoughts of his heart was only evil so continually. You got a wicked and evil heart. It's already mentioned in the Bible. Then you look in the gospel. You talk about, they talk about, they talk about Jesus and the disciples eating with unclean hands and all this stuff. He talking about, man, you worried about what we eat and we're going this way, but it's, it's from what comes outside, I mean, from the inside coming out. That's the problem. Your heart's messed up. Inside is messed up. Amen. Y'all with me? All right. Go back. Go back to that First Corinthians uh, 15. Now, and I want to get, I want to go uh, to, uh, uh, I want to get a little Matthew in here in just a second. All right. I'm sorry. Go to Matthew first. Go to Matthew chapter 26. Then I'm going to uh, 1 Corinthians 15. Then we're going to go to Romans 7. Then I'm going to close. All right. Read. <clears throat> 26 and verse number uh, 39. And he went a little farther and fell on his face and prayed, saying, O oh, my father, if it be possible, let this cup pass from me. Nevertheless, not as I will, but as thou wilt. And he cometh unto the now, disciples. Now listen to that. Go back. 
So now this is Jesus giving an example of the flesh and spirit. And let's do it again, huh? And he went a little farther and fell on his face and prayed, saying, O oh, my father, if it be possible. If it be possible. Let this cup pass from me. Uh -huh. So this is the flesh nature. This is the natural side. Read, uh-huh. Nevertheless, not as I will. Not as I. Dealing with the flesh side. So the flesh has a will. Uh -huh. Read. But as thou wilt. But, but I want the spirit. Yes. So now you got a spirit will, and then you have a natural will. So you got your will deal with the natural side of you, and then you got the spirit side that has a will. And that's the, that's the fight we have. That's the battle that we got going on. Y'all follow me? All right. Now, go, go back to that. Um, uh, give me Romans chapter 7 that deals with the same thing, same concept. Romans chapter 7 and 15. Paul saying the same thing. For that which I do, I allow not. All right. So that which I do, I allow not. All right. Everybody understand that? I know my, this is almost like a crossword puzzle. And, <laughs> and what is it? Sudoku? What is that little number game? Yes, yes. Sudoku. There's a little bit of that. There's a little bit of crosswords, a little bit of scramble. There's a little bit of everything in this text here, so you just pay attention. We're going to read it real slow together. All right? Read, uh huh. For what I would. For, uh, start over. That for which that I do, I, I allow not. So now you're saying that I'm restricting myself of things that I do. All right? Read. For what I would. But the things that I would. That do I not. That I'm not doing the things that I would. All right? Would deals with what? Will. Very good. So now, the things that is in my will that I do not, uh huh. But what I hate. But what I hate doing. That do I. So now, this is it, man. Hold on, Paul. You're saying a lot here. You're saying that you're not allowing yourself to do certain things, and then your will got a will of you doing something, and then the thing that you hate, that's what you're doing. So now, you got these two wills inside of you battling. Read, uh huh. If then I do that which I would not. If then I do the things that my will is saying no. Uh huh. I consent unto the law that it is good. I consent unto the law that it is good. Uh huh. Now then it is no more I that do it. So now it's not me that's doing it. But sin that dwelleth in so me. So now there's a sinful will that's in me that's dwelling and is trying to force me to do something. So this is what we deal with, with, and this deals with those two sides. And this, we're talking about anatomy, uh, not anatomy, what is it? Uh, anthropology. <laughs> All right, so we're talking about anthropology, right? So now you have those two wills, and that deals with two natures. All right? Keep reading, huh? For I know that in me. For that, I, then he gives something, very, a very powerful point. He said, I know that in me. That is in that my is, flesh. That is, so now he said, in me. And when he's dealing with in me, he's talking about his flesh. Now, anybody know what the word flesh means in this text? Anybody know what you're talking about? Desires. So now, most the most case scenario, people say, oh, my flesh, my flesh. You're thinking about just y y y your, your body or your skin. You know, oh, my flesh, flesh cutting up. No, that's not, this not, this ain't what we're talking about. My flesh, you know, my flesh. <laughs> My flesh cutting up, flesh, my flesh getting hot. No, it's not, it's not the flesh that we're talking about, tangible flesh, but in the nature of this, he's dealing with the desires. And so he says that in my desires dwells, read? No good thing. So there's nothing good in my desire. Now, how in the world am I saved and I have bad desires? Anybody know? Yes. Okay, sinful nature is throwing God place in us. All right, anybody else? Yes. That's right. Flesh will never be saved. Your desires can't be saved. And, 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 and it's amazing that when it comes down to the nature uh, of the conversation, when he talk about flesh, he's dealing with desires. And then also when we look at our bodies, we call it flesh. 
This ain't going to be saved either. It can't. And this is the battle because, can I be honest, the flesh don't want to be saved. I want no salvation. Oh, man. Y'all all right? The flesh don't want to be saved. All right, read, uh-huh. For to will is present with me. For to will is present with me. But how to perform that so which now, is good. Now, now he's saying to will. And, he's, and, and, and when he's talking like this, he's saying that your will, God, yes. your will for my life is present. I know it. It's there. I'm trying yes. to figure, look, it's right there. The pre, your, 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 your will is right there. It's present with me. But then the performance part. I have a hard time trying to perform it. So now we have, the, we have this flip-flop nature. Got the two wheels going on. Trying to, it's present. God, you're there. You're speaking to me. I can feel you. I understand it. Amen. Amen. I got an understanding of it, but it's, it's, I'm, I'm having a hard time to perform it. Have you ever been in practice or practice something Maybe a step, what do they call it, step dance? Yeah, step dancing, and you're doing your step dance, and, and you practice, and then when you got there, it was like you couldn't perform it. Oh, my God. You ever had a recital and played the, the piano recital before, and you, you practice all night, did that, and then once you got there, it's like, man, how am I going to do this? How am I going to perform this? I was there before. I, I, I took a, when I went to Savannah State, I took a piano class for some extra credit, and I already knew how to play the, I knew how to play the piano. I just ain't know how to read. And, and my son's mom, she knew how to read music, so she taught me what it was doing. So I'm sitting there doing my final. I'm looking at, the, <laughs> looking at it. I'm playing. <laughs> I'm performing, but I didn't know what I was reading. I was just playing by memory. <laughs> You would have thought I did it. It sounded sound just like I was reading that sheet music. I was over there. But when I got it, I ain't going to lie, I was nervous. I thought I was going to mess up. So sometimes you have it, but then when it's time to perform it, God, I understand your will. I understand what I'm supposed to do. But when somebody slapped me, I don't know how to turn under the sheet. Oh, man, y'all ain't saying nothing now, y'all. Everybody looking down now, so everybody. Just, I was talking about the recital and all that. Everybody's keyed in. When I talk about slapping. Everybody started looking in the sky. <laughs> the will is present. You know you ain't supposed to slap nobody back. Now, your mama told you. My mama said, yeah. <laughs> I just learned something. I got a bad, I got a bad memory when it comes down to my childhood. I got a terrible memory. Um, and my mother told me recently that somebody was picking on me in elementary school, was it? Said they were picking on me in elementary. And she said, she told me, she said, <laughs> you better stop letting them pick on you. You better, you, what you tell me? I want to make sure I say it right. You better. Stop, he was coming home with lots of his hand scratches. I said, you better stop. You better defend your stuff and stop letting them kids beat you up. That's what she told me. I was a little, I was a little boy, and so I went back to school. I had a different will. <laughs> she said the teachers called and said, um, "Miss Porter, um, Eli came in today and he started throwing chairs and tables at everybody." <laughs> so something. Uh, <laughs> I must have had a different will that was present there. I don't know what happened. There. They was picking on me too hard, I guess. I was little back then. I was real, I was the smallest person in the class. Everyone thought that. But they, after that day, moving forward, you know, ain't nobody bothered me no more. They was offering me stuff then. Is, you want some of this? <laughs> they try to share their lunch. Give me their pizza, cookies. <laughs> but, 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 so the will of God is present. But then when it's time for performance, Paul says, that which is good, but how to perform that which is what? Good. So then that means that there was a performance that was what? Bad. 
So if he's saying, but how to perform that which is good, I find not, then that means that what he was finding to perform, it wasn't a bad, I mean, it wasn't good, it was bad. So he said, your will is with me and it's present, but it's, it's still hard. How is it that God, your spirit can be with me and I can still have the wrong thoughts? Battling my thoughts. Want to kill yourself. And, but you got God right there. The presence of God right there with you. His will is right there. But because all this stuff is going on, you don't want to live anymore. Ah, God, y'all with me? This happens. So now we have the will of God, and then we have the will of you. And it's fighting, tussling. Read on. For the good that I would. So the good that I would. I do not. So he's saying the good things that I would do, I, I, I'm not doing it. Read, uh-huh. But the evil which I would not. But the, So look, look at what he's saying. He's saying the, the evil is not even in his will. Mm. But exactly. the evil which I would not, my will would not let me, or the will wouldn't let me, but that's what I find myself doing. Yeah. So for the good that I would, I do not. The good stuff don't do, but the evil which I would. That's the stuff I'm doing. I mean, the, the, the evil that I'm not, do, not supposed to do or wouldn't do, that's what I find myself doing. So now we see everybody has this dual nature. This is anthropology. This is how we learn ourselves. So the best thing to do is to make sure your feet in the right side. Make sure you're feeding the right side and following after the right side. And I'll show you this. And, and oh, let's be, keep, keep reading this. Oh, wait. Let me skip over real quick and then I'll come back. Um, go to the next chapter. The eighth chapter. All right. Y'all with me? Am I helping? Sure hope so. All right. Start at four, eight and four. That the righteousness of the law might be fulfilled in us who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. So now it deals with my walk. So the righteousness of the law, which means the, the right things that I should be doing is fulfilled if I'm walking. after all right read up for they that are after the flesh do mind the things of the flesh. now if i'm walking after it mm -hmm. then what uh procedures or what's before that i'm minding it so now i'm minding so now when i'm minding things of the spirit guess what i start walking after but when I mind the things of the flesh, what's going to happen? Ah, I'm going to walk after it because my mind been thinking about it. And every action that every person do in this building, it starts where? Up here. Everything you do is going to start in that mind. It's going to brew. You know, when we do stuff, it always starts here because we think about it. And when you think about a most case scenario, you think about the pros and the cons. If I do this, What if I do that? You sit there and think. You think about it. And then you have, a, then it's, it, it, it becomes a fight because majority of you in your will, you want to do it. Amen. But then it's that other little side that you ain't been feeding all week. My God. Yes, sir. That spirit man over there saying, ah, yeah. Kiana, now, hold on now. Slow, <laughs> slow down, Kiana. Slow down. But because your mind was on it, and if your mind is on it heavy, you're not walking after it. You're running. You're sprinting. Cat Williams, running. Take it off. Because I'm, my mind is there. 
So whatever my mind is on, guess what? I'm going to do it. Watch this. A person don't even have to be hungry. But you start thinking about food, what happens? You're going to walk, walk to that refrigerator. Yes, sir. That's right. <laughs> walk on over there. Don't even. Amen. It starts in the mind. This is why, this is why when you look, watch TV, and I, and I don't know if they, that, what they, I think they still do it. Well, you got a phone and all stuff now. They have these things called commercials. And the first part of that, you know, that root word of commercial is what? Come. Come. Commercial. So now, if I'm showing the burger and all the stuff and all that stuff, you need, it, it's placing something in your mind so you can chase after it. Yes, sir. And this is what happens. If we're minding the right things, guess what? We're going to chase the right stuff. Think about it. A big dreamer, a person that's mind is always on their goals, what happens? They become successful. When your mind is on something and you're serious about it, you're going to do it until you make it. But when your mind gets, and when it's deviated, takes a detour, when your mind is on this, your mind is on that, guess what? It falls through. Just start thinking about all the bad stuff going on in your life. What happens? You start chasing depression. Amen. That's right. My God, y'all ain't saying nothing. You could have a lot of good stuff going on in your life. But then you start thinking about these couple little bad things that didn't happen. And you, your mind gets stuck on all that little, you know, two little bad things. You done had a great year. Y'all with me? I'm helping somebody. That's why y'all quiet. Y'all let, let it marinate a little bit. <laughs> it's, about, it's about where you put your mind. And wherever you put your mind. And this is why, you know, most people that are successful, they were focused. They had somebody pushing them, staying in their mind. Hey, look, this is what you need to do. Hey, read this. Study this. Stay on this. Stay focused on that. And when you get focused on something, key in on it, you'll get it. You'll learn it. I remember when I first learned numbers and numerical systems on the keyboard. At first, I thought I wouldn't be able to do it. Then I did it. Then I, I thought I would never be able to play in more than two keys. But when I put my mind on that thing, I said, all right, I'm do it. I thought I'd never be able to play the bass guitar. Put my mind on it, did it. Thought I'd never be able to get the lead guitar, the saxophone, whatever. I just picked it up. And when I thought about it, once I put my mind on it, guess what happened? I was able to do it. So now, if you're struggling on getting out of certain conditions in your life, if you're struggling with things that's going on in your life, start thinking about the things that you want. Think about how much of a conqueror you are over whatever issue you have. So when you start thinking like that, you know, it make you feel better. You know, Paul says something very powerful. Um, Acts 26, verse number 2. That's it right there. Thank you. Acts 26 and verse number 2. Watch, watch what he say. This is how... This is how people get happy. How do you get happy? I think myself happy. I do happy. what? I think. think myself happy. Yes, sir. So your happiness ain't about your boyfriend, your girlfriend, your husband, your wife, your money. It ain't nothing about that. It's about how you think. Yes. How are you thinking about it? Where, where, where's your mind at? And wherever, I'm telling you, this is why people say wherever your, your mind leads you, that's where you're going to go. Yeah. Mind will take you places. All right, let me finish this up so I can let y'all go. Go back to that Romans chapter 7. All right. Seven and twenty. That's where you left off at, right? Or nineteen? It's twenty or nineteen. No, you don't know, Joe. All right. Now, if I do that, I would not. Now, if I do that, I would not. If I do the stuff that I wouldn't do, uh huh. It is no more I that do it. It ain't no more I. Right, we got to blame it on something. But sin that dwelleth in me. Ain't even me no more. It's the sin that's in me that caused me to behave like this. Read, huh? I find then a law. 
that when I would do good, there is a law that's now present. When I would do good, evil is present with me. Listen to me. Evil will always be present. Yes. Gotta be. You know why evil is present? Because good is present. And this is why when Jesus was teaching, he was teaching them. He said, when you pray, I want you to follow this type of manner. Uh, 6 and 13 of Matthew. Leave your finger there. I'm going to come back to Romans. 6 and 13 of Matthew. He said, now, when you're praying, I want you to learn how to pray like this. And read, uh-huh. Our Father. Uh-uh. 6 and 13. But thou, when thou prayest. 6 and 13. 6 and 13. And lead us not and into temptation. And lead us not into temptation. So this should be your prayer. Lead us not. Lord, while, while I'm going every day, Lord, don't allow me to fall into temptation. Don't allow me. This is how you. And, and for those of y'all that don't, don't know how to pray, read this. And th you don't have to say this verbatim. You know how we say, our fathers are in heaven, how be our name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, and earth as it is in heaven, give us day our daily bread. You know, no. You use this as a format on how to pray. So when you're praying and you say, and lead us not into temptation. Stop right there. Lord, I'm tempted by this. I'm tempted by that. Lord, I don't want to fall into this. I don't want to fall. That's how you pray. So he said, this is how I want you to pray. Learn how to pray like this. All right? Read. Uh -huh. But but deliver us from evil. But deliver us from what? Evil. evil. So why is it that we see that temptation is uh, uh, equivalent or on the same gauge as evil. So now, if we're tempted, it places us in an evil condition. Mm, amen. So now, when you lead us this day, Lord, please don't let us fall into temptation, yes. but deliver us from evil. Oh God. And then when you say evil, you, you talk, make sure you talk to God, say not just every type of evil. Yes. Evil that look good, because you know it's an evil that look good. It's a good, good looking evil. Yes, sir. Evil that smell good. There's all yes. type of evil out there. Come on, sir. So, 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 so when we look at that, we see that, you know, evil comes in different sizes, different forms. But Lord, I don't want to, I don't want to fall into this temptation. But listen to this. I want you to hear me on this. Listen to what it says again, and I want y'all to pay attention to how it's worded. And lead us not into temptation, but do what? Deliver us. Deliver us from what? Evil. If I have to be delivered from evil, what does that mean? The evil has me. Mm. I am captive by evil. Evil has me by the neck. We look at it that way. You say, oh, Lord, just deliver us from all evil. But you're not listening to what it's saying. If you have to be delivered from it, then that means it has to have you. And what he's talking about is your evil will, your evil nature. Deliver me from me. Deliver me from my evil will. Because there's a good side of me and there's a bad side. Amen. I wish I was here. So it's a it's a it's a good side of you. And it don't mean you got no devil. I know people tell you, you got a, that's that's sound like you got two persons. No, no, no. It's just a good side of me. And then you you fool around, you'll see the other side. <laughs> Cause that flesh don't care, man. You you bother with the wrong person, man. The while you keep poking the bear, the bear gonna wake up. That bear wake up, man. It ain't, it ain't going to be no games. Somebody done woke up. Mike, you all right, son? I heard a little growl or something. We need to pray for you. <laughs> I hope y'all ain't walking around here growling like no bears. I got to pray for you. But listen. <laughs> no, the flesh ain't gonna growl. No, my flesh growl. 
I think, yeah, I don't think the flesh gonna growl at nobody. All right. All right, go back to Romans. Go back to Romans. Go back to Romans. All right, Romans 7. All right, I'm about to close. Romans 7 and 21. I find then a law that when I would do good, evil is what? Present with me. So now, I have a problem with this te text, Sister Alicia, because in the verses above, he talks about in verse number, and I got I to gotta get y'all out of there, I promise. Uh, seventh chapter and uh, what verse you on? Twenty one. Mm -hmm. All right. All right, go back up to um, go back up to sixteen and read through that. If then I do that which I would not, I consent unto the law that it is good. Now then, it is no more I that do it, but sin that dwelleth in me. For I know that it that in me that is in my flesh dwelleth no good thing. For to will is present with me. But how to perform that which is good, I find not. Now, you got a problem here because you're talking about for that will that God has for us is present, but then also evil is present, the 21st verse. So now you got evil, an evil side and a good side. Good side and a bad side that are both present. What do you do when you got two people talking in your ear? Mm. What do you do when you got two, one bad side saying one thing and got the good side saying another thing? How do I deal with that? And that's a lot of times what we have. All right, read. Uh -huh. I'm about to get y'all out. 21. 21, uh-huh. I find in a law that when I would do good, evil is present with me. Uh -huh. For I delight in the law of God after the inward man. So he's saying he's delighting in the law of God that's, as, that's after the inward man. Let's deal with the spirit. Uh -huh. But I see another law in my members. He said, now, but I, I see there's another law in my members. And you're not talking about the church members. Amen. <laughs> He ain't talking about the members of the church. He ain't talking about inside itself. Read, uh-huh. Warring against the law of my mind. So now, now it comes down to a place where the war has now took over in the mind. Mm. So this is, this is what we have to learn how to do, is how to fight up here. Yes. Learn how to uh, tear down or pull down all these wicked imaginations, all these yeah. thoughts, all this evil that's being placed in your mind. Because, you know, the mind is so wicked, it'll have you believing that somebody don't like you that love you. Mm -hmm. That's true. You know, she, she, she's just nasty. She don't want to speak to nobody. And she, you know, her stomach was hurting that day. Come on. The mind, that's what the mind will do. The, the, the mind will treat you like it will make you believe that somebody dislikes you and they love you. That's true. It'll have you have your mind twisted. And that, that's where the war goes on. It goes always in the mind because this controls your steps. Your mind controls where you go. All right, read, uh-huh. And bringing. And bringing me into what? Captivity. So now I'm in prison. Read, uh-huh. To the law of sin. To the law of sin. Which is in my members. So now this thing got me on lockdown. Read, uh-huh. Oh, wretched man that I am. So now he's talking about how wretched... Y'all might call it ratchet, but it's a wretched. <laughs> oh, wretched man that I am. Uh -huh. Who shall deliver me from the body of this death? Who's going to deliver me from this body? Who's going to deliver me from this nature? Read, uh huh. I thank God through Jesus Christ our Lord. Uh huh. So then, with the mind, I myself serve the law of God, but with the flesh, the law of sin. So now, it has to be up here. Yes. So he said, now I, I, I then can serve the law of God but it has to come up here because I'm automatically serve the nature of my flesh it's, it, in essence what he's saying is you don't have to think about sin to sin because it's natural you know it's called a reflex somebody hits you, you automatically boom it's, 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 it's natural natural instinct so he's saying that you don't have to think to be you but in order to change your ways, you got to think. Yes. 
My God. You don't have to be, you don't have to think about being you because it's natural. It's something that you automatically do. You've been doing it for years. Been doing it for 20 years. You've been you for 20 years. And some of y'all 18 and 19 and stuff like that. And some of y'all 40s and 50s and stuff like that. So you've been, you've been you for a long time. So you don't have to think on how to be you. So now I have to use my mind to start thinking, hey, uh -uh, I, I can't do that. I got to be more spiritual. I got to deal with this better. So now I got to start thinking. Look at somebody and say, start thinking, start thinking. And I tell you something, when people start thinking before they do, life will be better. Because sometimes we do stuff before we think and we end up hurting people because we didn't think about it. We end up doing something that we regret because we didn't think about it. So now when I start thinking, I say, you know what? And they used to have this little wristband. I used to have a bunch of them. WWJD. What would Jesus do in this instance? Would he be pleased if I behave like this? Would he be pleased with my nature of doing that? Right? Okay, read, uh-huh. So then with the, with the mind, I serve the law of God, uh-huh. But with the flesh, the law of sin. Automatic, uh-huh. There is therefore now no So now, here's the cure, and I'm closing. This is the cure. He gives us all of the indications, gives us all the components in chapter 7, at the end of chapter 7, but then in, in chapter number 8, he says, therefore there's now no condemnation to them, uh-huh. Which are in Christ Jesus. Which are where? In. in. Now we got to get in them. So now when I get on them, I, put, I, I bear the image of them, and then I have to learn the likeness by walking after the Spirit. Yes. Who walk not after what? The flesh. But what? After the Spirit. So now I've got to walk after the Spirit, but it do with my mind. How am I thinking? Yes. Some of y'all need to pray for your minds. Mm -hmm. Stop praying about the Lord. I, I want to think better. I want to be able to get my thoughts together. So when I'm in a company of people, I don't feel this type of way. I won't do this. I won't do that because of my mind. The mind, listen, the mind is a terrible, they, they was right when they said the mind is a terrible thing to waste. Because you waste that, boy, that's, all, that's really all you got, really. You, you lose that, that's it. You lose that mind, that's, that's it. This is why God gives us love, power, and a what? Sound mind. Sound mind. Sound. Sound. It's amazing they use that word sound. Because if it don't sound right, I ain't letting it get in there. Amen. It's good. It's powerful. I'm not letting nothing get in there. Read, huh? For the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus hath made me free from the law of sin and death. Uh -huh. For what the law could not do, in that it was weak through the flesh, God sent in his own son in the likeness of sinful flesh uh -huh. and for sin condemned sin in the flesh mm -hmm. that the righteousness of the law might be fulfilled in us who walk not after the flesh but after the spirit for they that are after the flesh do mind the things of the flesh so when I'm after the flesh is because of my mindset yes. if I'm after the spirit is because of my mindset so if I'm out of the spirit, when it's prayer time, I'm ready. To, my mind is set on prayer. I want to get in prayer. When I'm coming to get something to eat from Bible study, coming to Sunday worship, my mind is set on that. There ain't nothing going to distract me. Ain't nobody going to do this. I'm not, I'm not worried about it. nothing that's going on. Yeah. I came to get something from God. And when you got your mind set up like, it don't matter. People be walking past you. You can't even see them because you're focused on something. You ever been so focused on a conversation to where you, it's, it's loud everywhere and you can't hear nothing nobody else is saying? It's because you're focused. And what we got to do, we got to get to the place where we're focused and we're minding the things of the spirit, not the things of the flesh. All right? Read the last part and I'm, I'm done. For to be carnally minded is death, but to be spiritually minded is life and peace. Look at that. Not just, see, what I like about the scripture is that not only does it say uh, that it's spiritually minded is life, but not just life, but it's what? Peace. Peace. So now the way I think gives me peace. Amen. The Bible talks about keep your mind stayed on him, he'll do what? Keep you in perfect peace. Keep you in perfect peace because the way you're thinking, the way your thoughts are. So we got to get our minds correct. 
Amen. Amen. Everybody understand? Mm -hmm. All right. Any questions about this? Yes, sir. Say, say that one more time. Was the reason Jesus walked the earth without sin solely because he was God? Well, yeah, he, he, he's God in the flesh, and yeah, he can't sin. And of course, he can't sin against himself. Yeah. So, I mean, that's good. And then the Bible talks about him fulfilling righteousness. So, yeah. So, because he was the sin of the seed of the Holy Ghost, mm -hmm. he, sin wasn't on him. Right. Yeah, no, sin wasn't on him. Yeah. No, that's why, and, and that's why when you see him, you see him being baptized in Matthew chapter 3 and him being baptized in Matthew chapter 3 he have nothing to do with repentance and he have nothing to do with getting the sin of Adam off of him right. because he didn't have the sin of Adam on him because he wasn't conceived by a man. Follow me? All right. So, yeah, so that's why, it, it, that's why even while he was baptized, it gave an indication on you being baptized to fulfill righteousness. So he's giving an example of what was going to happen. So when we get baptized, he talks about, you know, pulling off that old Adam, all that stuff. But he didn't need, he didn't have to repent. This is why John had a problem. John said, what am I baptizing you for? I need, you need to be baptizing me. You follow me? So yeah, so, so he, didn't, he, didn't need, he didn't need to be baptized at all, but he did that for, you know, living sake. Yes, sir. He was bearing the image of God. Yeah, he was bearing the image of God. So is that like Mark Jesus? So when it says the first Adam and the last Adam, like, you know, you don't say like first and last? Oh, no, 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 I wouldn't say that, that, no, that he, that's not, no, he's not talking about the first and last in, in, in that instance. He's dealing with, with time, being the only one when he's talking about first and last, because God, God calls himself first and last in Deuteronomy, and then Jesus called himself first and last in Revelation. Yeah, so yeah, that's right. All right, any other questions? Any other questions? All right, yes, sir. Oh, all right. All right, we can stand and give the Lord a hand praise tonight.